Hey everybody, if you've been looking for a small camper that's lightweight with big bunks, then stay tuned, I might have found just the one for you. Hey everybody, up here at our Coopersville, Michigan location today with a Surveyor 19 MDBLE, which is a lot of letters, that's quite a bit of alphabet soup here. But this is a really sweet camper. It comes in just over 4,000 pounds, which opens it up uh, to be, you know, towable by a lot of, say, bigger tow package SUVs, maybe potentially tow package midsize pickups, and of course, you know, tow package half tons and above. Um, and it brings a lot of big camper features into that smaller size. Like we've got a uh, extra tall ceiling. We've got a, uh, a bendy bed style Murphy bed, which can open up during the day and really expand your living space. Plus it has a dinette slide open things up further. So if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, factor in the extra tall ceiling as well. You don't feel like you're really crammed into a little bitty space on this one. Um, it also brings with it uh, something that's really hard to find in small campers, and that's a set of double size bunks. It interestingly also doesn't have a traditional camp kitchen, which I think a lot of people might specifically hunt for. There's a Every time I uh, show an RV with a camp kitchen, the number one request is, can I get it without that? And usually, no, you can't. But with this one, you don't have to worry about it. But it does still bring with it a neat little outside, uh, you know, garden hose style sprayers in case you got to do a little quick cleanup. And it does have a little griddle outdoors. The underbelly's enclosed. It's got a big air conditioner on it. Where Asdell, it has a, a ladder on the back. There's a lot of good things going on with this one. I'd love to hear what you think about it. And as we go, let me know your favorite thing about it. Let me know your least favorite thing. And if you're new with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button to catch us on the next time. But for now, let's get inside here. And I actually need to begin today uh, offering a quick correction. It's it's like two seconds in the video and I'm already getting stuff wrong. Sorry, I see so many different RVs. It all blends together over time that, uh, you know, sometimes I get my wires crossed. And especially as I've, I've been exposed to so many new brands since joining the ranks of Bish's RV, um, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot to juggle, you know. But uh, long story short, I mentioned how this RV had an extra tall ceiling. I was getting my wires crossed with something else. This has a, uh, a fairly conventional six and a half foot ceiling height. I just want to make that known. Um, you know, I, I can admit that I'm not perfect and I make mistakes. And my wife can actually even verify that for you. Um, she's actually very happy to do so. But uh, neither here nor there. I, I just want to make sure you folks are getting good information. Now, this RV has a lot of really great qualities. But at the end of the day, it is important to remember they took a tandem axle floor plan and squished it down into a single axle size. So there's certain things like the entertainment center on this one is not like the most TV conducive. But I think that's okay. I think that this is the kind of camper where what you're trying to do is like sleep everybody in here and then give yourself just enough space where you could survive a rainy day. And that's where this one comes in. You're doing all that in the smallest camper size overall possible. Because, you know, even though this has a cool Murphy sofa to give you some extra seating space during the day, the only really good place to enjoy the entertainment center is actually over here in the dinette. So just kind of keep that in the, in the uh, back of the old memory banks there. And again, being fair, this RV does not have a lot in the way of door side windows. Now, if you're sitting here at the dinette, Again, you can kind of peek around the corner and you can leverage those bunk windows uh, against door side window coverage. But that also assumes that both the window curtain and the bunk curtains are all open. And this is interesting. What do you guys think about this? Uh, I, I don't know if I like it or dislike it. I'm looking for a tiebreaker. They use clear glass inserts on those cabinet doors. Now, that's very interesting to me because it does make the camper look and feel a little bit bigger. But at the same time, if your cabinets are a little bit uh, disorganized or in disarray, which I suppose is another way of saying disorganized, in case you wanted to tie in both London and England, I'm an idiot. You get the idea. Now, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm moving on. Let's take a look at all the stuff around the sofa here. Kicking it off with a nice set of dresser drawers down below. And I've lifted the sofa up so you can see, uh, you know, it is very 
like cleanly finished and separated from uh there there's some brands where you lift the sofa up and it's just no man's land and it's just you're dropping crap into the storage down below um some people like that some people don't i don't know it just depends on how you feel now over here they kind of leave this open and i i'm wondering like would that be a good shoe garage what would you use that for there you'll see sealed edge press membrane countertops through the entirety of the camper and i like the little cup holders on each side of the sofa right there i think that's a nice little touch over here, you have some household and USB outlets, which can be very handy, obviously, during the day for charging phones or whatnot, but also at night for, you know, charging phones and whatnot. <laughs> and there is a, a nice bit of storage overhead, which not uh, like, like a north-south Murphy bed because it sticks up taller when it, versus an east-west Murphy bed like this. A north-south Murphy bed, you have to pretty much give up all of your overhead cabinet storage. And in this camper, I think it's really important uh, and the reason for that is the fact that this one has a full-size bed. The thing is, I think this camper is actually almost better in bed mode most of the time. Because, again, the, the sofa doesn't give us a direct view of any sort of entertainment center. I think that this is going to be useful for traveling and for rainy days when you can just put the bed away. But let me show you how this works right here. It's a nice dry day. I'm going to kick the shoes off so I can climb on everything. This is a simple jackknife sofa, and I'm not usually a big fan of bendy beds, as I like to call them, or a folding style, Murphy style bed or whatever, but this is about as easy as it comes. If you've come up with any sort of solution to like, uh, they make, uh, you can use suspenders to like strap the bedding down when you put the bed up, or uh, they actually make, you know, stretchy band bed clip things that'll keep the bedding in place uh, when you put the bed away. You might be able to do this in a way where you don't have to put the bed away. You didn't have to pull it forward. I don't have to shove it back or anything like that. You might notice it's it's a little bit weird how it actually still has this little extension right here. But that's another reason I think in this camper, I would almost, like when I got to my destination, I would put the bed down and I would make the bed once. And I don't think I would actually put this one away. Because if I need an extra little place to sit, you kind of still have this going on right here. And it's almost like when you have uh, a bed at your house with a bench or a seat sitting at the end of it for those who have something like that. It's kind of nice sometimes to be able to sit down and put on a pair of pants or shoes. And I know that we're all in one communal space here. I kind of really like the idea that people aren't sitting on my bed to do stuff. A bed's just, it's a very personal, private space, you know. But what I was getting at, one of the really coolest, bestest qualities in this whole RV is actually the bed size because this is a 60 by 80. So even a tall drink of water like me can actually totally stretch out of this thing and uh, have, have plenty of room. Now again, being a bendy bed, if you're, uh, be, because I mean, we all know that's just the best mattress ever, right, man? You know, obviously, I don't know if you can hear the sarcasm dripping off of me currently, but you get the idea. Uh, the fact that it's a 60 by 80 opens up a world of better bedding opportunities. And there's more than enough room here. If you at least want to just throw a foam topper on it, you could do that. And because it's so easy to put away, it's actually got a little, like, uh, quick latch over here. So, like, that's all there is to it. You're done. And you're done. As far as bendy beds go, I like it. So leave me a couple comments and let me know what you think about that. Again, the fact, the simple fact that it's a full 60 by 80 True Queen earns some serious bonus points for me in my book. Um, now, this is not daylight peeking through the slide. That is a little LED accent light. The thing is, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a stark white or if it's like a nice little amber glow. But either way, it's not something that's bright enough that's going to disturb you at night. So if you need to leave that on like a little nightlight for the kiddos or, or, you know, anybody to be able to see their way to the bathroom, maybe you'd like to see your way to the bathroom at night, you can easily do that. Uh, you know, windows wrapping all around the slide is another really nice quality on this one right here. I like that little ceiling light fixture. It's just kind of, it's just, it's minimalist. It's geometric, but it's very cool looking. Anyway, a lot of things in campers are like so drab and dull. Now down here, you may notice it is as easy cleaning as they come. It is carpetless, it is ventless, and they even went carpetless in the slide, which is an area I see so many manufacturers drop the ball. Like, look, we have no carpet down here. And then in the dinette, the one place that you eat and you don't want to drip Kool-Aid uh, into carpet, that's where they'll, you know, the, the, they'll leave carpet down here because it's easier and it's less expensive. Now, both sides of the dinette bench do this. This is their easy lift storage system. And, um... I got, I got mixed emotions on it. I like the fact that 
you know, I can just, I, I can get down here and I can get to all the storage and it certainly is easy lift, but you do pretty much still need to take the cushions off. So I don't know what it's actually accomplished. Although I do like the fact that it's, they're using plywood where you're not looking. That's a nice touch. A little simulated live edge on the dinette table, by the way. I've kind of found that like, this is a little bit easier on the forearms. Like I tend to grind my forearms into the table when I sit down and eat at things. I don't know why. It's just a thing that I do for some reason. Um, good lighting package in here. And it's not like there's like, you know, 37 lights in this or whatever. It's just, uh, it just, they're in the right spot. It's just enough lighting to lighten it up and brighten it up. But at the same time, not having too many lights also means you're not, um, over, uh, extending your power usage. If you are going to be boondock off gridding, you want to make sure you're sipping on the battery, not gulping it. And the kitchen in here is very interesting. So first of all, um, being, you know, a smaller trailer and they tried to put all the big fixtures in it they could, you have limited prep space. So that flip up counter extension right there is very welcome by me. Now I've heard from some RV manufacturers, they say, well, we can't add these countertop extensions because it might block the door and that could be a fire code thing. But I still see a ton of brands doing this. So I'm not sure how much stock I put in that or if that's just kind of a, a silly little excuse they've come up with. It's a floor plan that either way, I think really needs and benefits from that countertop extension. I will say, like, if there was one thing I could change, and I'm gonna ask you guys this, what is the one thing you would change? I, I like that it's a two burner stove. I kind of wish it was one of those more vertical style two burners so that it had a little more dedicated counter space here. That's my one personal wish for this camper, but I'm gonna give them serious credit. Thank you. Thank you, Surveyor, for actually giving us not even just one drawer, but three. We got drawers to the floors under the sink in this thing. I, it just it frustrates me how many uh, smaller RVs have absolutely no drawer space in them. Even some decent-sized, bigger RVs, it's just, it, you need them, you know? But this is going to be very interesting. I, I want to see what people think about this right here. That is low-mounted, obviously, and this RV does not have a gas oven. But that is a convection microwave. So if you want to cook a small batch of cookies and biscuits for the morning, you can do that sort of thing here. That is the, uh, you know, you do have that kind of potential opportunity. Up top, we got our little solar controller. This does have a small factory solar package. We're going to take a little bit more of a, uh, a look at that when we get up top. Now, that's only a 10 amp controller. So it's not, this isn't something made where like, well, you can just slap a ton more panels on it. If you want to go big solar, there is some decent room on the roof. Um, you're going to have to do some like aftermarket rewiring and whatnot. And over here, we have a 12-volt uh, a DC compressor fridge. This is, that's a Dometic, so I believe that's 10.3 cubic foot. And somebody the other day said, holy cow, why is it so deep? So hey, let's answer that. And on today's installment of Your Word from the Nerd, why is the 12-volt fridge so much deeper? And the answer is because it's a compressor fridge, not an absorption fridge. If you've ever seen one of these things dismounted and pulled out of its location, uh, a, a conventional two-way gas electric fridge has this big mechanism on the back of it that's actually your cooling unit. Um, it occupies a lot of cubic foot of space, whereas a, a compressor fridge doesn't quite need all that stuff back there with that absorption unit. So uh, what that means is, this isn't wider, it isn't taller, but it holds more total capacity because it can be deeper than a two-way fridge. That's that's some of the benefits. So a, a two-way fridge on propane mode is really nice because it's by far the most, um, it uses the least amount of battery power of any refrigerator possible out there. And if you're plugged into park power and you have an overnight power outage, it will auto kick over so that you have an automatic backup. So the peace of mind factor is cool, but it is also slower cooling and smaller capacity. And there are some areas where you can't necessarily run that thing in transit. This, you can leave this thing running all the time because uh, it's just feeding off your battery power and you've got a solar package and your vehicle, if wired properly, is sending power into the battery. So this is travel safe, it's fast cooling, um, and you're going to find that this RV has some pretty good traveling access. So if you want to stop and have a popsicle or a sandwich, this fridge is probably the one that's going to work for you. So if that was news to you, if that was beneficial stuff, make sure you hit the like button on our video here. Try to always work a couple, you know, tips and bits of info into our videos as we go today. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're new with us, hit that subscribe button, you know, always keep that information coming out for you. Now the bunks over here, um, they are very private. They are built in, and this wall's extended out a little bit because they are, 
They're kind of double bunks. They're a little bit wider than single style bunks. I don't know if this is a full on double bunk. I don't know that there's, there's really even a true definition of what that means, but they are a little bit bigger. So again, if you're looking for a bigger sleeping space because you've got a longer kid who needs to sleep crosswise on these things, that might work for you. Now, what is nice is you have a, hey, lights out kids like that. You can reach from ground level. You don't necessarily, like there's some campers that will put that same light way back there and the kids can reach it, but you can't. So if they're kind of being brats for the night, uh, you're, you know, it's, it's a little bit difficult sometimes. And I love this location's attention to detail. The, uh, the crew has been out here proactively cleaning and detailing and, and making sure that everything is right and tight on this, uh, RV. Very impressed with, uh, the, uh, our Coopersville location today. Now, did you notice also there are separate curtains for each bunk and each bunk does have its own individual, uh, light and set of USB plugs. So, you know, each bunk has its own privacy. Each bunk has its own lights, its own curtain. The one thing I was not able to locate is a sticker telling me what the weight rating is on the bunks. So all I can do is roughly estimate for you 250 to 300 pounds, and maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. And you know what? I, I, I The fact that that is just all wide open back there, that almost makes me wish this was like a folding cargo bunk. So the problem is I already used my Genie's Three Wishes uh, to, to wish for a different type of stovetop. Can somebody else please wish for a cargo bunk on this one for me, please? And again, there's a couple things that surprise me as we go. Like there's some things they really nail on the execution of this camper. And where the, where the execution I feel falters a little bit, I think it's largely because it is just a small space and there's only so much they can do. But little details like a lock on the bathroom door, because sometimes you just, you need a moment of privacy and you need to just you know, play on your phone for a minute. Am I, am I right? We just need a little hidey hole. <laughs> I believe Miss, uh, Miss Melissa Randazzo, anti-fan, she is uh, a regular viewer. I believe she uses uh, her bathroom every now and then for a little bit of a breakaway sanity space here. Now I'm at kind of a funny angle for it, obviously, but you can see that we do, oop, I'm punching the camera also. We do have a full dedicated bathroom sink and that is a medicine cabinet, not just a mirror glued against the wall. We're actually at a good angle to see something like that. And it's funny because I like windows and bathrooms. I think they look good, but there's no way I would ever leave that window open, you know, so that I could sit there and have a, a conversation with the neighbors when I'm on the toilet. So the fact that there's not a window, but you have a one, two, three, uh, you know, towel hook right there. I don't know. I think that works for me. That works pretty darn well. It's very functional, obviously. Porcelain foot flush stool was a nice find in this. And the, uh, the leg room, the space around this, this is a super fluffy, friendly toilet space. Um, the, uh, the shower is a little bit of a shove where you've got like a little mini tub with the shower enclosure. So if you got to bathe a baby, you could do that with a little sprayer wand, but it's a nice rectangular shower too. Not a smaller radius shower that you find in a lot of little campers. But remember, this is one of the reasons I, I had to make that correction to say, Hey, this is not an extra, extra tall ceiling or anything like that. Because if you're over six foot like me, your head's got to be in that skylight. Uh, what is kind of nice here though, it is a full max height shower surround panel there's just there's there's no way for water to really get on top of and drip down below that thing and if i had to summarize this one's slide closed road mode travel accessibility uh you know ultra quickly i would say that it, it's absolutely fantastic for a quick travel stop but i don't know that it's a good fit necessarily for a travel stay over and i'll explain what i mean by that so like we can get to the fridge we can get to all the cabinetry all the storage all the cooking facilities that's awesome we can get to the bunks but i said it's not good for a travel stay over potentially i'll show you what i mean by that but first the bathroom access thankfully the bathroom door can fully open here so if we need to make a quick little on the road potty stop when there's not a uh, you know you ever notice how you can pass a rest stop and the next one's not for 200 miles. And right after you pass it, even though you asked your kids, hey, kids, you need to use the potty. They say no. As soon as you pass it, they go, I got to go potty. And you're just like, mm. <laughs> at least that's how it always works on my family trips. Anyway, I said that this is good for travel stop, not a stay over. Like we can get to the bunks, but by smashing, condensing everything down as much as they could to fit it into this size, Unfortunately, the Murphy bed does not function in transit. Like the, the little jackknife sofa just doesn't even have room to go down, let alone put the mattress down on top of that. But you do have a pair of big double bunks. 
So depending on, you know, how badly we need to stop and rub the sleep out of our eyes and how many people are camping with us, maybe you can put the kid in like the top bunk and uh, you and, and your partner or something like that take the bottom bunk just to get a couple wings and get you through the night until the sunshine comes back up and you can get some caffeine pumped into you. I don't know that that's going to work for everybody, but it's just, I don't know, just something that kind of popped into my head. Does that make, like, would you do that on a, if you had to? Now, I don't know if you caught this on the inside, but the slide side windows, those do open for airflow, which is important because that awesome panoramic viewing window, it gives you great visibility, but it also does not open for airflow. Now, for visibility, if you want to utilize that cool front windshield, you do kind of need to leave the bed down during the day. That's an interesting thing with a lot of, uh, you know, Murphy bed kind of campers that very few of them uh, allow you to use the windshield during the day. But it also does kind of look sort of cool. Now, while we're over here, I'd like you to just to take a quick mental note on the location of that water heater. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. In case you're curious, this is an Asdell using brand, which is one of the ways that they're able to help keep the weight in check a little bit on here. The uh, uh, triple stable step is also another indicator here that you are running on a little bit bigger axle, which is important because at just over 4,000 pounds, that does mean that this has a fairly limited cargo capacity. I always pride myself on being fair and transparent. I like to share the good with the bad. That is really the one major Achilles heel that I find on this floor plan. If you are a heavy packer, you are probably going to want to stick with something that is tandem and axle. Um, now. I mentioned the water heater. I want you to under uh, note that <laughs> I couldn't decide if I wanted to say note or notice or notate or whatever. So what came out is uh, anyway. Anyone else ever do that? Of course you do. That water heater prevents us from having a full traditional pass-through compartment. Kind of a bummer, but again, when you're shoving a tandem axle floor plan down into a single axle size, something's got to give. I like the motion lighting, though, and you see how it does come with that little NASCAR attachment so that you can pick through your uh, stabilizers up and down, and it is front and rear stabilizers. Uh, otherwise, especially on a single axle, this thing would tend to be all very wiggly and jumpy on your campsite. Um, with single axles, though, you pretty much always have to uh, use some kind of like, um, you know, little aircraft style wheel chocks. You know, the yellow plastic wheel chocks, by the way, they're fine. They're fine. They do the job, but they actually expire. They get brittle from sun exposure over the time. The rubber ones are a little more expensive, but they look way cooler and they last way longer. Jumping over on the other side here, you see that this, like I said, it doesn't have a traditional outdoor camp kitchen. It does at least have that cool little griddle station though. And this is weird, kind of buried in between the, the griddle and that little shelf table right there is a, uh, a water hookup for that uh, kind of high pressure sprayer port right there. It's unconventional, but you know, again, it's a small camper. They packed a lot of stuff into a small space. I can deal with a little bit unconventional as long as I have functional, and I think that it is. You see the TV hookups over here uh, next to this under bunk storage, and this is something I think a lot of people might actually really like about this one, especially on a small RV that very often, again, has limited storage because we don't have a full pass-through cavity. I think having a not camp kitchen and an extra outside storage compartment is kind of handy there. And in case you're curious, that little box that I shoved in there, that is the box that holds the bracket for that griddle. Um, it's the same size as that griddle box. I just threw it in there to kind of give you some sort of, you know, scope and scale as it were. All LED tail and marker lights, although that is becoming more the standard uh, as opposed to a, uh, you know, exception. It seems like more and more things have those. And a roof ladder on a single axle little camper. That is absolutely awesome to see. And it's extremely rare on smaller lightweight trailers like this to find something like that. Um, the, uh, the RV does have a single sewer outlet, which is kind of nice. And it, uh, you might have remembered, remember I, I said that three-step entry step. That also means that this thing's riding on a little bit taller chassis. So long story short, with the, uh, the bigger tires and the, uh, the, the bigger chassis as compared to a conventional single axle camper, you actually have really good sewer line clearance here. And I love the fact that they didn't extend that out. There's so many manufacturers who will have a higher riding RV and then they artificially extend the sewer pipe and it ends up having terrible ground clearance. So this is one of those that I, I don't feel like if I, if I go over a speed bump, I'm not gonna rip off my sewer hose, you know what I mean? So first of all, I just wanna give them credit again that they're putting a ladder on a single axle little camper like this, which very few brands do. Frankly, a lot of big tandem axle campers 
don't give us a ladder to get up here on the roof. Which is funny because the manufacturers also say, you need to get up here about every 90 days to check your seals and to keep on top of your maintenance. It's a lot easier to do that when I have a factory supplied ladder. Now if we took look straight down at this thing, we can see a very cool feature. The 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Um, Maybe around here in the Midwest, some people might feel like that's overkill on a little camper. Folks down south, out west, I think you're going to know that that is a very nice, very handy thing to have for you. Also, the factory standard 80 watt solar package that we have up here, it's not the be all end all of solar. It's not running the air conditioner or, or anything like that, but it's tending the battery. And on even a, a lightly overcast day like today, like the sun just came out, which is feeling glorious, by the way, I spent all day yesterday getting rain down. So this is just like a treat for me, right? It's going to keep the batteries topped off when it's in storage and maybe some short-term light duty off-grid kind of camping, but not an indefinite off-grid sort of function. And another little interesting note here on the Surveyor Legend series, because this series has both single and double axle uh, smaller lightweight campers. The number of propane tanks equipped on the RV actually will match the number of axles on the camper. So, you know, single axle camper, one propane tank, double axle camper, two propane tanks. And they have, you know, similar but like expanded versions of the floor plans up in those tandem axles. Like if you like what you're seeing here, but you, you're like, I would prefer something with a tandem axle, maybe a greater cargo uh, carrying capacity. Um, take a look at the links in the video description. I've got some other options there for you that might work pretty darn well. And short of that, like I said, let me know what you like about this one and let me know what you'd change given the opportunity. And until next time, folks, take care. Stay, hello, trailer next to me. Take care, stay safe, have fun. <laughs> Happy camping. You think I could see a giant trailer coming at me, but no. Bye.